What's up YouTube and welcome to another exciting video where I'm talking about gold, silver, precious metals, investing, all that good stuff. If you're into that type of thing, which I assume you are because you're watching this, uh, like this video, subscribe to my channel and check out my website, My Road to Wealth and Freedom. Um, where I just posted an article the other day about Warren Buffett buying gold. That's all the that's all the all, all the rage now on the on um, YouTube and, and personal finance websites and all that stuff. Um, yeah, so if you're into it, check that stuff out. Um, in this video, um, I want to talk about uh, some more gold investing and gold, silver, precious metals. As well as some things that are going on in the world. So today I received this package and inside I received another Canadian maple. It should be a Canadian maple. So I'm just going to open this up. Here we have it. It should be a 2020. Yep. And let's check it out. Just a beautiful coin. I'm going to bring it right up close. It better have a 20 in that. There's a little tiny maple leaf right here. And that's for the bullion DNA um, to detect counterfeiting and stuff like that. Uh, and inside that maple leaf, there's a little tiny, tiny 20. Not sure if you can see that or not. But anyway, so uh, this is ounce uh, number five. And I last night I purchased another ounce. Another gold maple. Um, there was, uh, you know, a big price drop in gold yesterday, so I decided to pick it up. So, yeah. So why am I doing this? Why am I buying all this gold? Why am I buying all this silver? Um, actually, more more so gold than silver. Although I have bought a number of silver ounces before the big run up in in the price. I bought mine below twenty bucks US. Uh, but gold I've been buying all the way. In fact, um, this is my most expensive ounce. I literally bought it, I think two weeks ago Thursday, at the absolute top of the of the market. So now this same thing today you can get for about 130 Canadian, um, probably, I don't know, 85, 90 US, maybe $100 US cheaper. Um, but I don't care. Um, you know, I'm not super happy to like buy at the top, but honestly, guys, this is not about, um, you know, spot gold numbers on a screen going up and down or gold futures contracts. I mean, a number of uh, a number of gold experts and people who really understand um, the inner workings of this market have said and uh, evidence has borne this out that. Uh, the precious metals markets are manipulated. Um, you know, they got the big banks uh, keeping prices down. They're shorting and depressing. In fact, yesterday, Scotiabank uh, just paid a big fine for doing for spoofing the market, uh, the gold and silver market. You know, we know, I think it was in April they announced that they're getting out of the precious metals market altogether. Um you know, they probably, I don't know, this is speculation on my end, that maybe they got burned March 23rd when the price of gold soared. Um, you know, they uh, they were short gold when it made a big jump. So um, maybe that has something to do with it. I don't know. Maybe they were on their way out anyway because of all this stuff, all this legal action. Um, so the paper markets are manipulated. Uh, the physical, physical gold is going to be in high demand. Um there is um there's just a limit as to how much is out there um so i do think it's prudent i'm buying physical gold uh, but yesterday uh for the first time i bought um, paper gold in the form of the royal canadian mint uh depository receipt it's actual 100 percent backed by physical gold um i decided to buy about i think about eight thousand bucks worth of that it's like 265 units or whatever. So I don't know what that comes out to, two and a half ounces or something like that, whatever. Um, I do think now more than ever, it uh, it's important. I, I, I own stocks. Um, I still own stocks. I'm invested in bank stocks and all that stuff. But I want to be real and I recognize, you know, my own limitations as an investor. I don't have all the answers or all, all the knowledge, uh, you know, um, 
I've done very well investing in, in, in my stalwart dividend stocks uh, over the past 10 years, as has everybody. And that's the thing. That's one of the things about investing. You know, uh, people always say like, oh, hey, I've done so well. Uh, uh, you know, you get, a, you get a question like, why, why have you done so well? Is it you, the investor, is just so brilliant that you've outsmarted the market? Or is it just the fact that a rising tide lifts all boats? Um, the past uh, 10 years, we've definitely had a, a rising tide that lifted all boats. I mean, you, you, you'd you have to be a complete moron not to be able to uh, pick any stock and make a killing off of it in the past 10 years. I mean, they were coming off such a low base at a 2008 financial crisis. All the money printing, uh, record low interest rates, it just goosed everything. Um, real estate is is at all-time highs. Stocks are at all-time highs. So, I mean, you know, uh, am I a brilliant investor? No. Was I smart enough to have money in the market during one of the best bull runs ever? Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's kind of a no-brainer. It was obvious in 2009 that we were going to get through this. Life was going to go on. And um, a little bit of pain, but the world would sort of bounce back. Well, now let's fast forward to today. Um, it's not that clear. The problems facing uh, the markets uh, today, the world today, the whole global economy today are, are a lot different than what happened in 2008, 2009, which is what's scaring the hell out of a lot of people. Um, lots of people are buying gold and silver right now. Because quite simply, the financial system as we know it may not survive the next year, the next month, the next six months. There may be a, a, a big reset. Now, I don't know for a fact that this is coming. Um, but I don't know for a fact that it's not. And the reason, because of this big unknown, precious metals like gold and silver have gone, you know, parabolic. Um I think a lot of people are recognizing now that the, the amount of money printing, currency debasement, the amount of debt, we are at like 235 or $40 trillion of debt worldwide. I mean, that's just not going to be paid back. So what are some options here? One, uh, mainstream economists are talking about this kind of like debt jubilee where, where all the countries in the world will just forgive all the debt and will just restart from zero, basically. We'll just uh, restart everything, forgive all the debt, and start growing again. Okay, if you've lent uh, or if like you loan money to a country and they owe you billions, hundreds of billions, maybe even like a trillion dollars, are you going to be like, ah, yeah, no, um, uh, don't bother paying that back. We're good. I don't think so. I don't think so. You're going to want your money. And, um, so I don't see that as a realistic option. Like no, no countries are going to just be like, yeah, okay, just, uh, don't bother paying me back my debt. Um, it's all good. Um, there are losses to be had there. Um, you just, that's just not going to be realistic. What's the other option? They're talking about revaluing gold and I guess by default silver, if gold and silver are revalued to take into account all the money that have been printed, all the dollars and euros and yen that have been printed. Um, they're estimating that gold could be anywhere from maybe $10,000 to $40,000 an ounce. Um, I mean, that just seems totally wild and crazy. We're sitting on the cusp of $2,000 gold. Uh, to think that this, this, this yellow metal can go to, you know, a high end of $40,000 is just insane to me. Um, but that's some real stuff being pushed around. I mean, I don't know. I don't want to tell you guys, um, yeah, for sure this is going to happen. I mean, don't take it from me. I'm just a guy talking about gold and silver. I'm not a financial expert. Uh, do your own research before you do anything. Don't ever take my advice. Um, these videos are just entertainment. There's my disclaimer. If you want to buy gold and silver, talk to a, a financial advisor. Um, but that said, um, there's, there's, uh, there's good reason to believe, uh, that, you know, something, something, something's happening, uh, among central banks. They're buying gold, they're hoarding gold. They have been for a few years now. 
Um, it's just kind of making everybody very nervous. And I was watching this. Um, I, I saw this interview with uh, with a woman by the name of Danielle DiMartino Booth. Um, she, I think she her her outfit is Quill Intelligence. Um, you can check it out on YouTube. Uh, she, uh, there's plenty of videos with her. She's an economist that actually worked, I think, with the Dallas Fed. She left in 2015 or something like that. But she's she's somebody that you might want to listen to. Uh, she really understands central banks. Uh, and uh, I mean, I, I don't I don't say she's like 100 percent right. Uh, I'm sure she's made made bad calls or maybe made mistakes before, um, whatever. But. Uh, when you're learning about stuff, you want to hear from people who actually know what they're talking about. Um, so I'm thinking somebody who's kind of worked for the Fed might be a good uh, might be a good source, um, if for no other reason than just an opinion. You know, um, uh, we know what Peter Schiff thinks of the Fed. We know what uh, Jim Rickards and uh, Jim Rogers and all these guys, Mark Faber, what they think of the Fed. But what does somebody coming out of that? Uh, organization think about what's going on and I think it's very clear that what she was saying is that you know central banks around the world are printing money Um, it's very uncertain right now no one knows how this is going to play out we've never been here before and I know in every crisis they say oh my god this never this one's different it's never different and it's always the same but you know, these aren't run of the mill recessions that we tend to be having. We had a huge financial banking crisis in 08, 09. We printed all this money. They've never been able to uh, restore their balance sheet to, to offload the, all, all the bonds that they purchased and all the uh, treasuries and stuff that they've been buying. You know, the Fed's never been able to do that. Um, they had to stop raising interest rates and start aggressively cutting them. And they were already doing quantitative easing before the Corona, or uh, before this new virus hit. <clears throat> so, um, what does that tell you? Well, that tells you that, that, um, that we're probably going to be in for some, some trouble ahead. Anyways, what, so what she's saying people should do, if you don't own precious metals buy them, that's, that's, that's her advice. Um, you know. Don't bet the house on it. Don't bet the farm or whatever. Uh, but at the same time, uh, everybody should have uh, some precious metal exposure for sure. And she was saying, um, she the advice she had received was uh, to have exposure as high as twenty five percent of your of your investable assets. That to me is and just an astonishing number. Um, I'm nowhere close to having that personally. But, um, but, uh, but I'm starting to get up there now. Um, I'd like to, my goal, uh, at this point is to, um, I hope to have about a year's worth of expenses in gold and silver invested, saved up, whatever I'd like to have. I don't know. I don't know if it's a year's worth of expense or whatever, but I'd probably like to have between 50 and a hundred grand worth of precious metals. Now that's a lot. That is a lot, but, um, you know, uh, what do I got? What do I got invested in, in the stock market? Probably like, you know, through uh, oh, 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 like, you know, 750 grand or something like that. Um, that's like three quarters of a million dollars. That's a lot of money, uh, invested in, in the stock market or like financial paper assets. Um, what, what do I got invested in my home? It's like definitely worth over a million dollars. Um, so when you, when you kind of put that stuff in perspective, um, you know, having 50 to a hundred grand, uh, worth of precious metals exposure is kind of negligible. Now I'm not going to have a hundred grand in gold, gold maple sitting in a tube. Um, you know, it's obviously going to be some some paper gold as well. I'm looking at getting back into some of the gold miners. Uh, I think we're going to get a pretty decent correction. Hopefully, maybe it's underway. I don't know, but I'd like to pick up some uh, some gold mining shares. Um, I bought that uh, Royal Can- Can- Canadian Mint uh, depository receipt, which is 100% backed by physical gold. Um, so you know, I'll probably uh, you know maintain that. Um, basically I want some paper gold so that I can kind of sell it off so that I can like effectively, um, 
keep to uh, strict asset allocations, right? You don't want to like, you know, as gold rises, if gold jumps to 10,000 an ounce or something like that, I'm going to want to kind of sell a little bit off and rebalance. Maybe at that point, stocks or real estate will be really depressed and uh, and uh, I'll, I'll go want to buy a property or I'll uh, maybe want to buy some uh, shares of uh, the market or, or a particular stock. I don't know, but um, that's kind of what uh, I'm doing, but I do want a healthy dose of you know, physical, um, at least half that amount. I want it to be in like physical gold because there's the saying, if you don't hold it, you don't own it. And, um, coming through, uh, these crises that we're going to be seeing, um, I, I think it's just prudent, um, for every investor to hold a little bit in physical, you know, there's pros and cons to owning the physical, um, but uh, as a former coin collector or, or as a coin collector, um, it's never really bothered me. So, uh, yeah, guys, um, that's the video today. Um, you know, uh, of course, the other news, Warren Buffett uh, bought some shares of Barrick Gold. I think it was like uh, half a billion worth of Barrick Gold, $550 million worth of Barrick Gold shares. I mean... We don't know. I guess there's like, we, we don't know if Buffett bought the shares or if one of his deputies did. I think people are saying it's likely his deputies and blah, blah, blah. But I think like, and mo most alarmingly, I guess Buffett sold off a lot of his banks. You know, he has Bank of America. That's his biggest bet now. I think three billion bucks into Bank of America. He sold off JP Morgan and Goldman Sachs and uh, PNC and uh, Wells Fargo. I mean, Wells Fargo is a, is a junk stock, so I can totally get why he get out of that. But um, what does what does the old Oracle of Omaha think is coming? Um, does he think we're in for a banking crisis? You know, um, is he is he trying to hedge and, and, and protect his uh, his wealth and stuff? Um, I, I assume so. Yeah. Um, a lot of people, you know, were, were kind of puzzling over this decision by Buffett to buy, to buy gold or, or to buy like that gold stock, which is by the way, Barrick Gold's a dividend stock. You know, they've, they've been increasing their dividends as have most gold miners as, uh, you know, the price of the metal has been soaring, you know, they're doing better. Their financials are looking better each day. Um, but, uh, but, uh, yeah, you got to keep in mind. I mean, Buffett has, uh, like, you know, Geico, it's just his insurance company. Um, I mean, insurers can be, can be smashed in a financial crisis because they have all these obligations. If they've been writing these annuities, uh, to people, they might have huge obligations when the market crashes. Um, bonds aren't paying any interest. I mean, insurers are going to suffer big time. That's just what I think. So Buffett's actually quite exposed. And uh, not to mention the hundred and what, $30 billion, $40 billion he has sitting in cash. Um, what if we do get, you know, massive inflation or, or what if, um, um, we get a lot of like uh, currency debasement you know, what's, what's that cash pile going to be worth? Probably not a whole lot. Um, you know, it could, uh, it's being eroded every single day and has been for 10 years. Uh, on top of that, he has a lot of like economy businesses, right? He has like, uh, railroads and all kinds of stuff. So, um, I'm sure he has his reasons or his deputy did for, for, uh, making that, um, making that investment. Has he been buying? Maybe. Has he been? Did he sell on the news? If I was one of those hedge fund guys, that's that's widely followed. Um, every single time I bought something, as soon as the news came out, the the 13F filing came out that hey, hey, this guy bought all this stuff, I'd be selling it, right? Because you know you're going to get that the Buffett boost. Um, but uh, it also brings a whole lot of other questions, like how much. You know, B Buffett has, has been a hugely successful investor. Um, you know, obviously, he's like one of the world's richest men. Um, but I, I think a lot of that, a lot of his biggest gains, the best gains in that came from, 
you know, uh, the golden age of investing, uh, like of, of the stock market. You know, he made a lot of money in the 60s, 70s and 80s, you know, really since, I don't know, 2000. How well has he done? Has he outperformed the market? I'm not so sure. In 08, 09, it's not like he went on a huge shopping spree. Um, he bought uh, the bought the railroad. He made a few other investments. I think some five billion to Goldman Sachs, uh, uh, some some money into Bank of America. You know, it's I, I don't really feel like he's done a whole lot in the past ten years, and that's why he has that huge hoard of cash. So, you know, people are seeing has he lost his edge and stuff like that. I, I, I it's hard to say. So who knows what the guy's thinking? But um, you know. They made Berkshire made big bets on the airlines, and this Black Swan event basically wiped out that investment, um, as well as some others. So, uh, I I don't know, I don't know what to think of Buffett anymore. Not like I'm the I'm the greatest investor or anything like that, but that's just some food for thought, right? E e, e even the the so called greats can fall hard, um, if they're not careful, but. Uh, Anyway, uh, this video is just dragging on for so long and I don't want to bore you guys, but those are just kind of my thoughts. This is kind of what I'm doing. Um, I'll be putting out another video, obviously, when I pick up that ounce. I got it from uh, Silver Gold Bull. They matched my local coin shop price, which is great. Um, I really like that. I'll throw up the link in the description. Guys, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and check out my website, My Road to Wealth and Freedom. That's it for today, guys. Take care.